good morning everyone today we will discuss on the topic of the stress echo and how it helps in the in cardiology uh, it, uh, normally in the absence of the coronary uh, flow limiting uh, in the absence of the coronary flow limiting lesions uh, when the physiological stress occurs it causes the increase in the heart rate and the contractility and the increase in the myocardial blood flow which leads to hypercontracted response with the increase in the ejection fraction and the decrease in the h systolic volume uh, first we uh, find out the what is mean by the coronary blood flow reserve it's a ability to increase the uh, coronary blood flow to above the resting value in response to the stress and the normally in the resting blood flow remains constant up to the 85% of the diameter of stenosis but the coronary blood flow begins to decrease when uh, the stenosis reaches up to the 50% of the diameter and, he, and the coronary blood flow is abolished when the stenosis reaches to 90% of the diameter and the, how the ischemic cascade occur when the ischemia occurs there is a decrease in the perfusion due to the coronary uh, occlusions which leads to diastolic dysfunction first and then the systolic dysfunction which leads to changes in the ecg changes and then patient develop the angina pectoris and the last the patient develop the myocardial infarction which leads to the cell death uh, in this sequence the mostly the changes occur in ischemia so while the rwmi the regional wall motion abnormalities which mostly occur at the rest in the infarction in cardiomyopathies myocarditis stern myocardium post operative status pace rhythm while in stress it occurs in the ischemia marked decrease increase in the blood pressures or any cardiomyopathies pulmonary hypertension red related lvbb okay and the types of the stresses mostly used are used in the stress echo these are the if we use the exercise stress or non exercise stress on exercise stress we use the treadmill supine bicycle up, upright bicycle hand grips stairs reps while on the non exercise stress we use the pharmacological drugs like uh, dobutamine diperidamol and dobutamine or diperidamol combinations adenosine or pacing while uh, in how we, we first discuss the exercise stress echo on uh, treadmill but uh, advantages of treadmill are these are the widely available it's simple protocol and the preserves the additional information already which are available from the tmt its disadvantage is the imaging is uh, restricted to the immediate post operative period and the ischemia may resolve quickly and hence the window for the image acquisition is very small up to 1 to 1.5 minutes uh, and the additional information which are obtained from stress echo is the exercise capacity is the uh, reproducibility of the symptom with activity heart rate and bp response to exercise and detection of the stress induced arrhythmias and the control of angina on the omt the stress stress protocol is uh, prepare the patient first with the obtain rest images patients then perform standard tmt as uh, prefer and the patient uh, as patient moved as soon as possible from the exercise to the examination table post exercise images acquired and recorded both images and then compare supine bicycle ergometer the patient positioned uh, on a supine bicycle ergometer with the roughly 30 degree head up tilt test head up tilt and the rest images obtained then the exercise started at a workload of 25 then cadder of the 60 rpm then the workload is increased up uh, by the 25 with the uh, every 2 minutes and the images obtained throughout the exercise and peak exercise exercise images uh, are obtained to look for the normalization of the wall motion abnormalities uh, this is how the or uh, supine ergometry test is performed then bicycle ergometry the it is difficult in uh, difficult for some patient and the ischemia is induced for the uh, lower heart rate because the greater increase in the preload and the greater bp response the we will see the differences between treadmill and the supine bicycle the treadmill have advantages like the widespread availability simple protocols high workload and the more specific and disadvantage is having the imaging the post exercise only while in the uh, supine bicycle the advantages is that the imaging possible throughout the exercise especially peak exercise and the onset of the uh, roll, uh, uh, ro- onset of the rwma with better image quality applying contrast easier and the more sensitive its disadvantage is the lower workload is achievable and the supine position affects the exercise physiology uh, some patient which are do not perform the exercise test will uh, in that person we will perform the pharmacological stress testing so in pharmacological exercise as a stressors so drawback as though it's a, like a hyperventilation hypercontractivity of the normal walls 
एक्सरसाइज टैकेकार्डिया एक्सरसाइज चेस्ट वॉल मूवमेंट्स विथ अनएबल टू एक्सरसाइज एट ऑल और मैक्सिमली सो दिस आर ऑल सरकमेंटेड बाय द फार्मेकोलॉजिकल स्ट्रेसेस सो प्रेफरिंग फार्मेकोलॉजिकल ओवर इको जिससे इनएबल टू एक्सरसाइज और वेन द माइकोड वायबिलिटी इज एन इश्यू सो फर्स्ट वी डिस्कस द डोबोटाम स्ट्रेस इको इट्स अ सिंथेटिक कैटाकोमाइज एनोट्रॉफिक एंड द क्रोनोट्रॉफिक इफेक्ट्स which mostly act on the alpha beta 1 beta 2 receptors which inotropic effect at the lower doses and the more of chronotropic effect at the increasing doses so net effect is a increase in contactivity heart rate myocardial oxygen demands metabolize hepatically and in peripheral tissue but no dose reduction in needed in the hepatic and renal dysfunction and also the no dose reduction is needed in elderly patients so exercise versus uh, dobutamine stress echo uh, what the difference so in difference is the increase in the venous return is less augmented with the dobutamine and the lower increase in heart rate and the greater augmentation of contactivity with the dobutamine hence the ischemia often develops at the much lower heart rate and a decrease in blood pressures generally signifies the extensive ischemia during dobutamine infusion it may be due to the development of LVT gradient which can be identified with the doppler and ecg evident uh, evidence of the ischemia is less reliable during dobutamine infusion then it is during the exercise stress testing thus the neither st depression nor elevations occurring in the absence of the rwma is an indication for the termination of the test uh, protocol for the dobutamine is patient is prepared like a 4 hours fasting with all negative inotropic and the chronotropic held for 8 to 12 hours iv access should be obtained the baseline images obtained uh, rest images and the continuous ecg and bp monitoring is established and the dobutamine infusion is started at the 5 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute and rate increase every 3 minute 3 uh, minutes to a doses of 10 20 30 40 microns per kilo, per kg per minutes on low doses low dose images acquired at the first sign of the increased contactivity at the doses of 5 to 10 microgram per kg per minute for viability assessment the initial dose is 2.5 microgram per kg per minute atropine can be given in aliquots with 0.5 to 1 mg during the mid and the high uh, dose stages if thr is not achieved or the maximum dose of the atropine should be uh, 2 mg and the mild dose images acquired at either 20 to 30 mg per kg per minute peak images obtained just before the termination of infusions and the post stress uh, images obtained after the return from the return to baseline and patients to be monitored till the return to the baseline a trial dose of 50 mg per kg per minute may be used if the thr is not achieved at the 40 uh microgram per minute per dose per minute and the gentle hand arm exercise may be used to for the chronotropic augmentations this is how the uh, test is performed protocol every third minute or three minutes we will increase the dose up to the 40 and uh, we will uh, achieve the thr then the start test will be stop and the post uh, patient should be monitored up to the baseline uh, heart rate then the indication to terminate the dobutamine stress during the stress echo what are the indication which are the uh, when the thr exceeding the 85% of the age predicted maximum development of significant angina new wall motion more of dermity or uh, systolic blood pressure more than uh, 20 decrease in the systolic blood pressure more than 20 mm mercury from the baseline then uh, sustained symptomatic arrhythmias severe hypertension which is more than 220 per uh, 220 systolic safety the its safety of the dobutamine stress is studied extensively because it's a half life of 2 minutes hence induced ischemia is readily reversed by the termination of the infusion in severe cases the short acting iv beta blockers ismolar metoprolol can be used most common side effect is the minor arrhythmias like vpcs or the atrial arrhythmias these are the some studies which are performed uh, with uh, and compare with the other uh, pharmacological agents dobutamine dipredamide dip- and adenosine dobutamine is seen in the scanus and the dip- dipredamine in ranowski and the adenosine sercurea uh, the, the we see the, uh, the there is a least common side least side effects occur in the dobutamine stress stress as the chest pain is 3.5% only and hypertension only in 3.8% uh while though in other uh, drugs the there is a 20% uh, chance 20% patient have developed the chest pain in uh, uh, with dipyridamol while in 35% patient develop the type of chest pain in adenosine uh, when drug is used so the more complication occur with the other adenosine and the uh, dipyridamol as compared to the dobutamine in one series there is a 
1118 patients prefer for the dobutamide stresicode there is no incidence of death myocardi infarctions or the sustained ventricular tachyarrhythmias of fibrillation multi et al 1993 studies uh, in as a diperidomal we will second see the second uh, stress uh, pharmacological stress agent the potent uh, it is the diperidomal it is the potent uh, coronary vasodilator provokes the angina attacks in the angina patients and the its vasodilatic actions causes the inhibition of the reuptake of adenosine by the endothelial cells its coronary blood flow increases 4 to 5 times in normal vessels and the reduction of the subendocardial blood flow in stenotic coronary arteries so it uh, causes the coronary still phenomena and the uh, standard protocol is 0 0.5 uh, 0.54 mg per kg for 4 minute and high dose protocol is 0 0.84 mg per kg its antidote is theophylline Content indications are the active wheezing, patient having the high, uh, high degree AV block, hypertension, uh, like systolic blood pressure less than 90, recent use of diperidomal in less than 24 hours. Related content indications are the history of reactive airway diseases, sick sinus syndrome, and the severe sinus bradycardia. So, third is the adenosine. Uh, naturally occurring agents, its uh, receptors are A1 and A2. A. A1 has a slow heart rate and conduction speed A2 acts on the cyclic MP, which decreases the cyclic uh, calcium uptake by the sarcoplasmic reticulum and smooth muscle relax vasodilatation. Its half life is 2 seconds and uh, it needs the continuous IV infusions and rapidly it rapidly removed by the RBC and endothelial cells. Uh, adenosine, it is having the more side effect like the flushing, it is seen in the 37% of the patient, dyspnea is seen in the 35% of the patient, where the GI discomfort is in 15% of the patient, headache in 14%, the light headedness in 9% and the most side effect are the short lived and the mild uh, and the choosing between the pharmacologic agents uh, you will see the dobutamine is more likely to cause the true ischemia rather than the mere flow mismatch thus the wall motion abnormality is more likely to be detected on echo and uh, for inducing the per, uh, perfusion abnormalities both dobutamine and vasodilator are equivalent thus the dobutamine is considered as an agent of choice for the stress echo and the interpretation of the stress echoes how will you interpret the uh, will hyperkinesis the normal response to the stress if lack of hyperkinesis may lead, uh, may be the cause of the myocardial ischemia non ischemic cardiomyopathy beta blocker therapy severe hypertension delay in image acquisition then elderly patients uh, especially women uh, volume response when there is a decrease in the in systolic volume and industry volume is a normal response and 25 to 30 percent decrease in the uh, end systolic volume and industrial volume is normal response and abnormal volume response is defined as an increase in volume from the rest to the stress of more than 17 percent however with supine bicycle ergometry due to the increase in return and increase in lv volume may be a normal response the so, use of contrast agents when endocardial borders can't be properly identified in two or more lv segments contrast may be used Hypokinesis is the mildest form of the abnormal wall motion. It defines the preservation of the thickening and inward motion of the endocardium during the systole, but less than normal. And it is defined uh, as a less than 5 mm of the endocardial exertion. Tardokinesis is a form of hypokinesis delayed sometimes uh, post systolic and inward motion of the inward motion or thickening. Uh, Okinesis defined as the absence of the systolic myocardial thickening and exertion, endocardial exertion. Discarnesis is the most extreme form of the wall motion abnormality and is defined as a systolic thinning outward motion of the bulging of myocardium during systole and also ventricular segment uh, that is thin or highly echogenic indicate the presence of the scar. The early relaxation, a less common response, uh, a segment that uh, appears to be contract, contact uh, in early uh, systole than the relaxes earlier than the other segment most likely a normal variant and uh, it causes the false positive disease so how will we interpret the these responses on the echo so, uh, on normally in the uh, on rest if images occur uh, normal then the if on stress it hyperkinetic motion abnormality motion if occur on the echo uh, all segments then it's the normal uh, on rest if it is normal and on stress it leads to the hypokinetic or okinetic it may be the ischemic uh, and the if on uh, wall motion are the okinetic on the rest and the on stress also it okinetic then it's the infarctions while 
on rest uh, wall motions are the hypokinetic on the stresses it, uh, if it is or kinetic or diskinetic and it is ischemic or in functions while on the rest if hypokinetic or kinetic but on stress it's normal then it is the viable myocardium it uh, it improves with the revascularizations on the segment that are abnormal at rest uh, baseline but improves with stress are the special category and represent either normal response or localized abnormality with improved improvement due to the tethering effect of the normal segment and with dobotam and it may be represent the viability potential for recovery and the revascularizations while the localization of coronary artery we will see in the in echo when on the long long axis view we will see the led territory how it is anteriorly director anteriorly on the short axis we will see the anteriorly the led territory which is red in color and the laterally there is l6 which is the yellow in color and the blue in color in the post uh, rca territory these are four views we will see on the we will record on the echo on rest and the uh, stress echo long axis view short axis view then four chamber view and two chamber view the correlation with the symptoms and the ecg changes usually concordant when discordant really on rely on the echo images and the in fact one of the most common indication for stress echo situation when the stress ecg may be false negative like the lvh women and the LVBB in study with using the bicycle ergometry by Ryan et al. Research concordance between the ECG and ECO occur in nearly 50% of the cases. When disagreement did occur, ECO was mostly correct. However, a strongly positive exercise test should not be ignored. The detection of the coronary artery disease using the CAG as a standard and the overall sensitivity and of the exercise test test ECO is range from the 71 to 94%. The specificity ranges from the 80 to 90%. Studies on the dobotam and stress echo also give the similar result. While the stress ECG show the sensitivity on the 77, specificity 68 percent. Factors affecting the sensitivity are the degree of the um, coronary stenosis, its localization of stenosis, and the presence of LVH. And, uh, mostly the LBBB having the most cause of the false positive results. It's called the abnormal septal motion, abnorm abnormal septal motion, and the myocardial thickening is however piezo the trimming of loops to avoid the first few frames of the system can be helpful. The role out of the myocardial perfusion imaging. In theory, the perfusion defect may uh, precede the development of the wall motion abnormality. Thus, the myocardial perfusion imaging should be increase the sensitivity of the test and to detect the ischemia. So, for given ischemia, the spatical extent of the perfusion detect the uh, perfusion defect may detect the exceeds the wall motion abnormality. So, after injecting contrast, its distribution parallel the Coronary uh, parallel the blood flow and can be visualized as it travels the microvasculatures. Thus, the perfusion can be assessed as a relative change rest versus stress on the regional differences, lateral versus septum motion. In general, the perfusion information supplements the wall motion abnormality to take the coronary artery disease. So, comparison to the uh, in comparison to the nuclear perfusion imaging, the, uh, the sensitivity of the myocardial contrast stress is uh, 84 percent and the specificity also 50, uh, 56, 56%. Uh, there are multiple studies which are performed for the accuracy of the stress echo for detection of the angiographic coronary artery disease and the echo. Uh, why echo in comparison to the SPECT and PECT? So, it, because the low cost, eco environment friendly and uh, no ionizing radiations, equally accurate. And prognostic value of stress echocardiography is the an abnormal exercise uh, echocardiogram generally identifies the patient at the increased risk of cardiac events or new wall motion abnormality, rest and uh, exercise wall motion uh, score index and systolic volume response. In some most series, the echocardiogram evidence of ischemia was the most potent marker of high risk status. So, stress echo after the MI. Used uh, both to identify the high and low risk subset and to predict the localization and the extent of the CAD. The goal is to identify the ischemia at a distance. The positive finding would be detection of the new wall motion abnormality remote from the site of the previous infection, uh, infections. And the inducible ischemia is a powerful indicator of the high risk and suggests the need for further evaluations. So, pre-operative, uh, I will say the pre-operative risk assessment. In uh, most studies, the dobotamine stress is done the mainly before the major perivascular, uh, peripheral vascular surgery and therefore uh, included patient who frequently uh, are the unable to exercise and in high risk subset the presence or the absence of inducible wall motion abnormality has been the most potent determination of the relative risk 
the absence of the inducible uh, wall motion abnormality confers a very favorable prognosis with negative predictive value of 93 to 100%. Uh, in the meta-analysis, uh, examining the value of the diperidom, diperidom, uh, diperidomal thallium and dobutamine echocardiography before vascular surgery, uh, in Shaw et al. 1996 studies, the presence of an inducible wall motion abnormality on echocardiography provided the greatest ability to discriminate between the high and the low risk status. Uh, how will the assessment of the myocardial viability on echo? The term viable refers to the myocardium that has a potential for the functional recovery. The resting echo is neither sensitive nor specific for this purpose. So, use of dobutamine echo is based on the observation that the viable myocardium will augment in response to the beta adrenergic stimulation, whereas the non viable myocardium will not. And the dobutamine is infused with incremental rates and the response is carefully noted. The biophysic response, that is the augmentation at the low dose followed by the deterioration at the higher doses, is the most predictive of the capacity for the functional recovery. The such improvement or no change means the, it's a non-viable and the its sensitivity is 80 to 85 percent and the specificity is also the 85 to uh, 90 percent compared to nuclear uh, technique its uh, sensitivity is slightly low but specificity is higher uh, stress echo in valvular heart disease in our dictionary the there is no role in patient with uh, definite cardiac symptoms but there is a principal role in the exercise testing is uh, to unmask the symptoms or abnormal blood pressure response in patient with aortic stenosis who claim to be asymptomatic. While in the uh, aortic stenosis with low flow, low gradient and the LV uh, dysfunction patients, there is the anatomically severe AS with LV dysfunction less than uh, LVEF is more than uh, less than 40 percent, often present with relatively low pressure gradient such as the gradient of uh, mean gradient of 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury or less and so it's difficult to differentiate them from the primary cardiomyopathic process or thick uh, and a thickened but non stenotic aortic wall uh, producing uh, outflow is murmur that is pseudo severe AS. So in true severe AS the small and the relatively fixed aortic wall uh, area contribute to the increase in afterload and the decrease in the ejection fraction and a reduction in stroke volume while in pseudo severe AS the predominant factor is myocardial disease the severity of AS is overestimated on the basis of the aortic wall area because there is a incomplete opening of the wall. So in both situation the low flow state and the low, uh, low pressure gradient contribute to calculated aortic wall area that meets the criteria of the severe AS at rest is 1 cm square. So the resting echocardiogram does, uh, does not discriminate between the these two situations. So distinction is essential uh, because the patient with uh, true severe AS and the uh, poor LV functions will generally benefit significantly from AVR. So patient with the pseudo severe AS will not uh, and may also have the higher risk of perioperative mortality. So uh, how will we, uh, we will see this in patient with the aortic wall area if less than uh, 1, uh, both having the LV distribution fraction is less than 40 and the gradient is also less than 30. So on dobutamine stresses, we will uh, see the contact reserve. If you increase the systolic uh, volume of more than 20, then uh, uh, with gradient increase more than uh, 30, then it is a true severe AS, which uh, we will proceed for the uh, patient for the AVR, which will uh, definitely benefit from the AVR. Uh, aortic regurgitations. The exercise testing may elicit the symptom in patient with aortic regurgitations. Uh, who are apparently asymptomatic based on medical history, thus they identify the candidate for surgery. In addition, the pre-operative exercise testing capacity, uh, exercise capacity is helpful for predicting survival and recovery of the function after EVR. So, in mitral stenosis, the asymptomatic patient with uh, severe AS with mean gradient of more than 10 millimeters of mercury and mitral wall area of less than one, uh, or the symptomatic patient with moderate MS with gradient of 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury and mitral wall area of 1 to 1.5 cm square. The measurement of the pulmonary artery pressures, uh, which are measured from the TR velocity during exercise or dobutamine stress echo, can help to distinguish those uh, who could benefit from the voloplasty or wall replacements. So, patient with the reduced atrioventricular compliance show more pronounced increase in the pulmonary artery pressure during exercise or dobutamine than those with normal compliance. So, in some patient with moderate MS at rest, the physiologic effect of heart rate sensitivity and the atrioventricular Compliance can produce the exercise induced pulmonary hypertension and the exertional dyspnea. 
so the exit on the resting value of the transmetal gradient and the pulmonary artery pressures do not necessarily reflect the actual severity of the disease so the stress echocardiography is useful for the assessing the severity of ms assessing the hemodynamic impact and explaining the exercise induced symptoms the current acc and aha guidelines uh, gives the class 1 uh, recommendation for the stress echocardiography in patient with the ms and discordance with the between symptom and the stenosis severity the threshold value for the proposed for by the acc and aha guideline for the consideration of inter intervention are the mean trans mitral gradient of more than 50 mm of mercury during exercise or the peak pulmonary artery pressure uh, pulmonary artery systolic pressure more than 60 mm of mercury during exercise uh, in this patient the bme and surgery is recommended even with the apparently moderate ms at rest uh, mitral regurgitation the asymptomatic severe mr the exercise stress echocardiography may helpful to identify the patient with uh, unrecognized symptoms or the subclinical latent lv dysfunctions while in symptomatic patient in whom the severity of mr is estimated to be only mild at rest and the exercise echocardiography may be helpful in eliciting the cause so the we interpret the it's like the worsening of mr severity or mark uh, increase in pulmonary artery pressure impair exercise capacity occurrence of symptoms during exercise uh, echocardiography and it's useful finding for the identifying the subset of the apparently asymptomatic patients at higher risk who may benefit from the early surgery and the pulmonary artery systolic pressure more than 60 mm of mercury during exercise has been suggested as a threshold value above which asymptomatic patient with severe mr might be prefer refer for the surgical wall repair this is a class 2 indications uh, this is the image which will show on the rest uh, on rest the pulmonary artery pressure of uh, uh, tricuspid pulmonary gradient of 43 which increased up to the more than 60 Uh, to 78 and the severity of mr is also increase so this uh, this type of patient are uh, more benefit from the uh, surgical repair uh, prosthetic heart wall stress echocardiography valuable in confirming or excluding the presence of hemodynamically significant prosthetic wall uh, stenosis or ppm especially when there is a discordance between the patient symptomatic status or the prosthetic wall uh, hemodynamic major at rest in contrast to the uh, normal functioning on the well matched prosthetic uh, or stenotic uh, prosthetic or stenotic prosthetic wall the generally associated with the mark increase in the gradient and the exercise a uh, disproportionate increase in the transvalvular gradient of more than 20 mm of mercury for aortic prosthesis or more than 12 mm of mercury for the mitral prosthesis generally indicate the severe prosthesis dysfunction or ppm so higher resting and the stress gradient occur more often with the smaller uh, 21 for the aortic and 25 for the mitral rather than the larger size processes and the mismatch rather than the non mismatch processes uh, this is all from me uh, thank you for